Let's see, what color do we prefer? Should I be red? Ooh, no, that's that's very red. Uh, so red. Okay, green. Green is not bad. I don't mind green. It looks all right. Blue. So far, I like blue the best. Lighter blue, purple. Hmm. Purple, uh, pink. Oh, no. pink is too pink. That's too pale. Uh, green, orange, orange, yellow. Yellow's pretty neutral. Yeah. Hmm. Should I do yellow or should I do purple? No, purple is too light. How about that purple? Too pink? No, that's too pink. What do you think? Yellow, purple, or blue? Yellow. Purple. Or blue. Blue, okay. Well, just don't sing the song. The blue song. <laughs> Good afternoon, Abnormals, and welcome back to the Ministry of Abnormality YouTube live broadcast. I'm your host, O Abnormal, and today is uh, Friday, June 9th of 2023. What a sleepy afternoon. Well, while the chat room gets some people in it, let's just get to work. We got work to do. We most certainly do. Okay. Here we go. Let's end the week strong. Uh, do I have this at the right size? I do. Okay. Well, then uh, nothing else to do. Okay. Here we... Oh, no. That's not the brush I wanted. Here we go. Okay, so what we're doing today here is we are uh, working. Uh, this is an image for Mongoose. And it is a bunch of people at what seems to be some sort of uh, rally or something. It's kind of like um, some sort of political party. Or something of that sort and the person is talking she's giving a speech so one of the interesting things about this image is that I have to design the the logo of, of their organization but it's just like kind of make something up I you know, I wasn't given any information about what kind of organization it is or anything like that. It's just, you know, make it up. So, I'll think about it later. I want... I want... Uh... A nice little reference for that hand. And 
and we're going to get one. Oh man, it's a difficult afternoon. <laughs> Definitely. A difficult afternoon today. Don't worry about that, uh, Night Cow. And hello, by the way. Uh, I actually can't do Art Challenge today. I have too much work, actually. So today it's just going to be a chill stream where we, you know, where we chat while I work. And well, as far as I can see, while you work as well. But I am, I am very, uh, l later, I'll show you guys an image that I finished just this morning. And I'm very pleased because my, uh, the client posted it right away on social media, which means, well, I can show it. So I'm very, very, I'm very excited to share it. I'll chat with you in 10 minutes, having to record. Okay. Uh, I'm actually... I'm actually on the other screen using Easy Pose because I need a hand reference. And Easy Pose is normally good for a hand reference. Let's see. Uh... Chant pose I like. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I can do this on, on this screen so you guys don't have to. Yes, I can. Okay, I can drag this window over here. Easy pose is very useful this way. Like you just grab it. The hands are not impeccable though. I let me see this. I think I like the hands in um Not a fan. I think I like the hands in, in Clip Studio Paint better, but I don't have Clip Studio Paint anymore. Well, guess we're just gonna have to go for some classic old school uh, hand construction. This easy pose is really not going to help us. Not a big deal.
Okay. And this is where that month of art challenges, well, face challenges, as, as I call them, pays off. Hey, Ma! It's a very lazy Friday afternoon. How's yours? <laughs> yeah, it was difficult to, to get to work after lunch. Very, very difficult, but here we are. What about you, Ma? What are you up to? Uh, oh, uh, me? I am working... Wait, give me a sec. This is an image for Mongoose. I'll show you. This is an image for Mongoose. Some people at a sort of political uh, rally or something uh, talking. So yeah, here we are. But I finished an image today and delivered it to uh, the client and the client immediately posted it on social media, which means I get to show it. So wait, I'll show you. So this is what has me behind schedule on my YouTube videos and such. Wait, not that. This. Yeah, this one I finished this morning. So this scenery was actually made in 3D. Let's see if I can open that. Yes, this scenery was made in 3D. Wait, I'm opening it. Okay, come on. Yeah, so this scenery was made in 3D, as you can see here. Wait, camera. Camera. No, camera. Camera. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so here it is. And... Yeah, there it is. You can see the water was, huh, didn't even put it in shade smooth. Should have done that. But, you know, I guess we don't have any need for it anymore, but would have been a nice touch. Oh, that's probably killing the, oh, that looks a lot nicer. <laughs> well, it's done. It's done. And it pretty much looks the same when you render it. So whatever. Anyway, yeah, that was, um,
And you can see the... So, yeah. That image we finished today. And... Uh, I'm working on another one for that client. And... Another one for Mongoose that I want to finish as soon as possible as well. This one, which I really, really like as well. Um, yesterday, I I bought an add-on for Blender that I'm super into. <laughs> like, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And it's called Cable Raider. And well, as you can see... Now the image is filled with cables. And it's so much fun to use. It's like... Like you just start dumping cables into your image. I do love me some cables. So basically, cables, 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 and cables. But yeah, this image is for Mongoose. It's not done, though. I also did uh, this other image for Mongoose. Wait. Where is it? This one? No, wait. That's the one I'm working on right now. So that would be page 164? Ah, yeah, this one. But this one, I already have it finished in, in Photoshop. I'll show it to you in a sec. And this is the other one that I already have done in Photoshop. Uh, so yeah, these are basically, let's see, I, I should have them here. Ah, yes, here they are. Yeah, there's the one with the bottles done. Now with all the labels and such. And... The other one... Oh wait, the other one is already open. Uh, yeah, this one. I didn't have Cable Raider when I made this one, otherwise I would have added more cables! But, you know. And, but this one is another client. This one is for Eldritch Works. So, yeah. That's what, uh... I have, but I haven't been able to finish my YouTube video. And, and that one... Like, I wanted to upload it today. Now I'm hoping I get it done during the weekend. You know, just a lot of work, so. gotta pay them bills whoa yeah but we're actually saving money so we're trying to we're trying to save up some money so that's really what it's all about that's where it's at right now Uh, you could have just gotten geo cable for free. I mean, 
me see if it's as good. No reason we can't have both. But it's not free. It costs three dollars. Geo cable. Okay, where else can I find that? Maybe. Let me remember where it is that I have my Blender Market account. Okay, is it here? No, I, do I not have a Blender Market account? I should have a Blender Market account. Let's see, okay. Geo Cables GitHub. Okay, I can get it on, uh... I got it on, uh, Gumroad. Uh, <laughs> no, um, thank you for the offer. Okay. I'll see if it's better than Cable Raider. Cable Raider was really good. So. Ha have you ever seen how Cable Raider works? I can show it to you. Okay, wait, no, no. I'm very, I'm not exactly super focused this afternoon. As long as I get some work done on this, I don't expect to finish it, but okay, wait, I'll show you Cable Raider. We'll just go back to that page. Here we go, okay, so. So here we are. Uh, the, the, of course it's already installed. So let's just say I want a cable from here to here, right? So I just go and I press Shift Alt C, create cable. I click here, I click there, bam, cable. I can adjust how wide it is. I can adjust how tense it is. Uh, I can add points to it. Um, so if I want to add points to it, or I could just leave it like that and then I can re-edit it. Like I can go click it, edit it, and I can simulate the cable. So, okay, fit the geometry below. I'm not going to click that. I'm just going to simulate the cable physics. And so it's going to hang the cable. And now the cable is hanging according to, uh, its length and all that. I can re-edit the cable if I want. Uh, but now now I can, you know, edit the length. That, sorry, the, you know, how thick it is. Um, it also has, but, but I just bought it yesterday, so I don't, um, so I haven't experimented with that part, but it also allows you to add caps to it. Now here's something, um, Here's something really cool it has. Check this out. You're going to like this. Okay, so for example, wait. Do I have any of those here? No. Okay, wait. 
So yeah, there, there's a scene with Cable Raider, although I haven't like given the cables any materials yet. But yeah, you can actually add caps to it and stuff like that. But here's a neat little thing you can do with the cables. So like, see here, I have this group of cables. Well, you can make cables by group. So for example, you can grab here. I'm just gonna add a cube, put it right there, right? Okay. And we're gonna grab this cube. I'm just gonna grab uh, one face. I'm gonna subdivide that face and subdivide it again. Then um, I'm gonna move that over there and check it out. If I select both cubes and have both faces, I can connect by the faces. So I can tell it, okay, connect those faces, shift alt C. So I'm gonna create in there and I'm gonna create a mass. And now it creates a whole tangle, right? I can increase the length. Then I can just grab those cables and tell it to simulate gravity on the cables. It'll take a minute, but there you go. Now the cables are hanging. Now, some of them are clipping into the others, but they're very easy to edit. So you can grab this cable, open there, and you just grab the, you know, the part you want to edit, and you just drag it. Like, they're, they're all curves. They're already set. Now, here's something really cool. You can... Grab the cables, give it edit, and then you tell it that you're gonna rope them, right? Okay, so you just go and do like this, and it ropes the cables. And then you can tell it, okay, I want that rope to be that thick. Uh, how much do you want it to offset? How tight do you want it? So I'm gonna make them tighter. Um. But here's another one that's really, really cool. You can grab it again. Okay. This time, I'm going to tell it to uh, insulate. So you just go, okay, from here to here. And it makes an insulation for them. And then you can decide how many segments you want on your insulation. Wait, I made it too much. Okay, let me do it again. One, two, and then I can... Uh, oh, yeah, I can make it thick, less thick. Right? It does, it does do other things. I just started using it yesterday. So I know you can add caps to it, and you can modify those caps. Uh, what else is it that I saw you can do? I know you can make different types of cable because I saw in the video that they had, you know, flat cables, twisted cables, and stuff like that. But I still haven't figured out how to do that. I'm going to have to watch the tutorial for that one. Uh... Oh! Another thing that it has that I know you can do is that you can merge cables. So, for example, if you have one cable... <laughs> okay, so you can draw cables, right? So, for example, here I can tell it, okay, I'm going to draw a cable. And I can go from here to, let's say, down there. Bring it here. So, you can start by... Uh, I know you can polish this. So, for example, I'm going to make it... Right. Uh, and then, for example, you can actually... <coughs> uh, draw a cable. So, I'm going to do that, right? Okay, so there's a cable that I drew. Uh, I know you can actually merge another cable with it. So, for example, what I can do here is... I know I can adjust the smoothness. Uh, I can also adjust the curvature and the twist method, but I don't really know how to use those yet. 
Um, and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with that. Okay, and so, as far as I know, you can merge another cable with it. So, for example, if I put another cable here, and I want to merge these two. Okay, okay. Thank you. I think you just grab these two. Uh, you select both the tips, and then you tell it to merge them. I've never tried this before. Merge out of, see, and there you go. You merge the two cables. That's pretty useful as well. And then you can just uh, uh, you can just delete uh, vertices that maybe are extra. And it just kind of oh, there it is. It's going underneath. So yeah, I found it pretty easy to use. It's it's very very simple to use and all that kind of stuff. And and when you get like tangled cables, they're very easy to um, untangle, as you can see. What I haven't been able to figure out is how to make the cables have different cable shapes. Right, so so far I've been doing uh, round cables, and I saw in the video that they were doing uh, flat cables and stuff like that. I haven't really found where that is. Um, I don't know what the hooks are either. Um, apply symmetry, drop the cable. This is an illustration for Mongoose. Uh, I can edit the cable, but I don't see... Here's the caps. Yeah, I have to, I have to check um, how to... I have to check how to how to do the whole uh, different kinds of cables thing, but for now, yeah, this is a an illustration for mongoose. It's not done yet here in the three D. And yeah, okay. This image is also for mongoose. So yeah. Anyway, yesterday I was kind of putting cables. <laughs> You know, laying down cable in my illustrations, and I thought, eh, I bet there's an add-on for this. And... And the thing is, I had already bought an uh, something from that account a couple of days ago, because I bought an add-on for Photoshop. Um, last week, I think it was. And so that, that same person, like I bought the, the Photoshop add-on add from that same person. So I, I knew they had Cable Raider. And I knew that the add-on that I got for Photoshop was really good. Uh, it's a perspective add-on. I have it right here. It's really, really simple. It's really, really cool. And here's what it is. So... Let me let me grab a, a sample. Okay, so for example, we got we got let's say we got this image that I made for for Mongoose. But no, let's let's go with the finished version so it's nice and pretty. So we got this image that I made for Mongoose, right? And we need to work the perspective for it. Now the way I do it is that I basically lay down the lines, project them all the way to the horizon line. Sorry, let me sit up straighter. Okay. I was, I was slouching. Okay, so I take the lines and I project them all the way to the horizon line. Oh, actually, this reminds me. I had an idea for something I want to do on Fridays, and I need your guys' opinion. But I'll tell you about that in a second. Anyway, 
I extend them all the way to the horizon line. That makes me have to make the canvas super large and then really small and all that kind of... It's, it's like this huge thing. And I do it no problem, but sometimes it can get really heavy, stuff like that, because you end up with very, very large images if the horizon line is very far. Well, check this out. Perspective tools too. So here's what you do. You just make a new layer and you say, okay, uh, you grab the path tool. There it is. And you tell it, okay, from here to here. Then from here to here, make the grid. And it makes the grid with those. Oh, no, no, no. You, you need to select them both. Make the grid and it makes the grid. And then you grab from here to here, from here to here. And then you make another one from here to here. You select those two, make the grid, and you get your grid. The end. That's it. That's, I mean, it does more stuff, but that's pretty much all I needed to do. It's very, very useful. Uh, I used to have it in Photoshop, uh, like earlier versions of Photoshop, but back then I didn't pay for it. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, I had an idea. Um, okay. So let me contextualize you guys first. Um, so that you know where I'm coming from. And also because you know me. I always have a story. So as you know, I'm trying to work on my YouTube videos. It's been a little difficult because time is not something I have an abundance of, right? So... For example, editing the video that I have uh, has been taking a monstrous amount of time. But it is coming out pretty cool. It is coming out pretty cool. Uh, it's taking a lot of time to edit, but I'm happy about, you know, the idea and how I, I wanted to edit it. Because, you know, it, it feels like a different kind of video. It feels cool. It feels original. I'm enjoying it, right? But it is going to be complicated to find the time to make more videos when I'm super busy, right? Now, honestly, it's not a problem that I mind having. You know, I'd rather be busy than not. But I really, really, really want to give this YouTube channel a shot. So it is getting to be a little bit frustrating to not have time to do the things that I want to do with the YouTube channel. Anyway, as I told you guys before, for the YouTube channel, I have three basic types of videos that I want to do. Um, well, actually four, but the fourth is not that common for me. So the fourth type of video is the one I'm making right now, which is gadget and stuff, like gadget program, software review and all that kind of stuff, which I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do that because that does involve me buying stuff and well here where we are we don't really have that much access to those kind of things but who knows if the channel grows and maybe i'm sent stuff to review i do enjoy doing that so it's a fourth possibility anyway the other three that that i would be doing is um project videos where basically i record the entire process of a project and kind of talk you through it um two would be just art topics where i just talk about art topics which i might be able to um to produce without much trouble but those are the kind that i actually like to make little doodles for and stuff like that so the problem is that editing those Recording them is pretty quick, but editing them, editing them might take a while. But I do have another type of video that I want to make, which is tutorials. So yeah, tutorials on 
on different topics. How to do this, how to do that. Now, one of the things I want to do, or one of the ideas I have, is something that I haven't seen a lot of on YouTube, and I think it's missing, and I think I can provide, which is a good perspective course. But here's the thing. A good perspective course is not something you do in just one video, unless you're going to do like a 20-hour video or something like that, right? Like, perspective is not something you do in one tutorial. It's a course. I want to do one for YouTube, but then when am I going to record that? So I was thinking this morning, what if I, on Friday afternoons, I record the perspective class? Basically, on Friday afternoons, I teach a whole perspective class. And then, you know, of course, I have to edit the video. You know, I can't just leave it like that. Um... But, you know, we take this whole perspective course, we record it on Friday afternoons, and I later on edit that into a video. So, I wouldn't always be able to do it, because, like, today, you know, today I had to work, and, you know, I have deadlines to meet and stuff like that, so there is that. And it would, unfortunately, kind of replace the art challenge for a while, at least while we're doing that one. But, I mean, if, if anybody's interested in learning perspective, okay, Mao is behind the idea. What does Pew say? And Mike. This anatomy here has a little bit of an issue. What? What did I just do? What about doing it on Tuesday? Keep Art Challenge on Friday. Hmm. Clever girl. Any any thoughts from anybody else on that? No thoughts. But you would stream on Fridays, but you'd stream the recording part? Or how would that work? Well, Friday or Tuesday, whatever day I do it, it would basically be that, yes, I, I stream the recording part, but I, you know, I, I, I would basically just kind of record all of it, and then I would have to edit that. But I'd get the recording part of it done. Like, I would be able to to talk and all that kind of stuff because I'd be editing it all later on. So the idea is just to get the footage for editing. And like Pew says, we could do it on Tuesday instead of Friday.
basically the idea is that it would help me find the time for recording the stuff I need to record. And afterwards, all I would need is to find the time for editing, which is not that bad because I've actually found video editing to be a lot of fun. It's relaxing. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't feel the same way if editing was my job, like my full-time job. But as it is, editing is just kind of like a, a fun distraction from what I normally do. It's kind of the same when I do 3D. Like, when I do 3D, it's, it's just, hey, here's something different. That could work as long as it doesn't distract you from your actual work. But yeah, I have to do that too. Give myself a couple of mornings in the week to work on the videos. Yeah, I've been doing that. I've, um... It's just that I've been... A little behind on, on my freelance work. So I've... You know, my getting up early in the morning has had to focus mostly on freelance work. This morning, when I woke up, I... Yeah, I want to give myself a deadline too, but the problem is that... Well, I mean, I've said this a thousand times, but it's still true. The problem with this video is that this video ended up being too long. And... So, I mean, yes, of course, it makes sense. Editing a... Well, it's under 50 minutes, but then that's edited. So, like, editing the whole video part of it has, you know, it's like an hour and a half down to, uh, like, 45 minutes. Wait, I'll show you my After Effects file. It's, uh... Well, yes, I can... The problem with the with the deadline is, and, and I do want to give myself a deadline, it's that, for example, I had a deadline with this video for today. But during the week, at the beginning of the week, I got um, some new client work. And just yesterday, I got some new client work. Oh, no, what happened? Oh, no, what happened? Something happened. Oh, okay. So, so here, here for example, is the video. And uh, you, you can see like what I'm talking about here. Like it's just, it's absolute mad. Uh, for a moment, I thought the video was was broken. Um, so like. There we go. <laughs> so, so, yeah, you can see here, like... Like, you know, it's just... So the whole video is like fill, filled with details, but look at like the timeline on this thing. It's it's just crazy. Um, yeah, like. <laughs> that's a that's a fun. But that's the thing, Mao. Th this is this is like 
I, 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 I kind of made it trial by fire here. Right? Like, I, I, I kind of... I, I just decided to make my first video like a... Like a one-hour monster. With, with all these extra images and stuff like that. So... So it, it didn't need to be, and it probably shouldn't have been, but that's what I did. So, but you know, I'm not abandoning it. So my next video will definitely not be <laughs> that kind of monster. I can tell you that for sure. Yeah, definitely learning a lesson from it. The problem is that this lesson is taking long to learn. <laughs> Very long to learn. But I'm very, very eager to start because... This morning, I'm not going to say their name. You know, because I don't want to be that guy. But this morning, I was listening to some art YouTube while I made our protein shakes. And... And so... I saw one YouTube video that was basically how to get rid of uh, perfectionism. So I was like, oh, you know, perfectionism definitely makes me take longer in what I do. Well, I'll listen to that video. Now, keep in mind, I didn't really look at the video. I was busy in the kitchen. I was just listening on my headphones. So I don't really know how old this person is. For all I know, they're 12 or something. But they had a following. They had a following. They had uh, at least uh, a five-figure following, right? Oh, wait, Mo, you saw it too? When I was done with that video, I was both angry and eager to start my own channel. Because that person said some of the most ignorant stuff that I've heard in a long time that was oh man i i kept on resisting the urge to go like kick the screen <laughs> like okay so to not keep uh, i don't know if night cow is still here but to not keep other people like in the dark i'm not gonna say who it was but basically they were talking about how perfectionism slows you down up to that point okay there's there's some truth in that but then they started uh, using Leonardo da Vinci as an example. And so they, they were making the point that Leonardo da Vinci only made, well, they said that 20 paintings in his life. As far as I knew, it was 16, but 16, 20, who knows? After all, um, it's not even 100% certain that Leonardo's paintings are actually by Leonardo, but anyway. And they made, like, the whole point of half the video was that Leonardo da Vinci made so few paintings in his life because he was a perfectionist. And that perfectionism was what held him back. And imagine how many paintings Leonardo da Vinci would have made had he gotten over his crippling perfectionism. And wow, that is like, some, <laughs> that was like some next level. Oh, wow. I was like, oh my God. And, 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 and the worst part is I looked in the comments and, and it's, it's all like, oh yeah, yeah. You helped me so much. I, I needed this. And, Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Then that Monet took one hour to make his paintings. So imagine how productive he was. Because he would only take an hour making his paintings. Oh, it was just painful to watch, to listen to. I didn't even watch. I was listening.
at the end, my consolation was that, like, okay, at least this person is giving uh, a positive message of, like, don't let your perfectionism slow you down. But, uh, come on. I can't believe you saw it too, Mal. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, 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 the thing is... This person had a, a, a YouTube channel about the size... I, I would love to have a, a YouTube channel that size. And... YouTube is recommending that that shit let, let, let's call it what it is youtube is recommending that shit so that just makes me think well i mean the only thing holding us back is that you know we're not putting those videos out there Oh, let's not even get into AI, AI, uh, AI art channels. Well, I mean, art in quotations. Holy crap, every single other YouTube video is... Things you can do with AI art. Ten ways to use AI art. Um, AI art news. Oh my god, I hate them. I hate them so much. Eventually, I'm not going to resist the urge, and I'm just going to make a video against AR. It's like, yep, this has all been said, but fuck it. It's my turn to say it. I, I, I considered blocking all that content, Maul. But, especially because sometimes, some days, it gets to me just like it gets to everybody else. I'll admit, there are some days that that I look at what's going on with AI images and stuff like that, and I just go, oh no. What is even the point? You know, that I, I get that feeling too sometimes. Sometimes it just really feels pointless, and... Uh, but I'm 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 dealing with it because are we talking about AI art videos on YouTube? Who's the YouTuber you want to roundhouse kicking the balls the most over it? By the way, hello man with no screen name. I will answer that question um, in a sec. I need to get mentally ready to answer it. But I will answer it. I will answer it, and I would say it to their face. Um, but you guys got to answer too. That that's the deal. We answer it together. Uh, but the thing is, I continue watching them because I I do think it's important for me. I have to stay up to date with these things. I can't. I can't. I can't risk. Uh, not knowing what's going on with it. Uh, partially because of what I like to do, you know, what, what I like to do online, uh, the kind of content that I plan to make, all that kind of stuff. It is definitely in my best interest for the role I want to play online, you know, where I want to be teaching and I want to be making tutorials, I want to be making informative videos and stuff like that. I, I think it's very, very important for me to stay up to date with that, but also because of me being a teacher, literally, in the sense that uh, it's it's definitely very important that, you know, I am, I don't allow AI produced images in my classroom, but I have to be up to date on what's going on 
with AI because most of my students last semester they 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 know nothing about AI but there's always the one or the two that do and well I think I told you guys that last semester I caught a student trying to pass off AI generated images as their own and they got a big fat zero for their efforts or lack of but it's very very important that i stay up to date on those things i can't um I, I can't let that catch me by surprise and the thing is if i had not right if i had not been up to date on ai images and what they can do and and how they work and all that kind of stuff that student would have would have gotten away with it so so yeah i have to keep myself up to date on that Okay, as for what YouTuber do I want to roundhouse kick the most because of AI art? Um, Adam Duff. Adam, if you're listening, I love you, man. You were a good teacher. I had a good time with your mentorship, and I'm very, very thankful. And I even mentioned you in my videos. Um, I don't want to roundhouse kick him in the balls, which, by the way, is not the best roundhouse kick um, in the world because... Normally, roundhouse kicks go high. Uh, in the balls, you just go with a straight punt. But anyway. <laughs> the technique of ball kicking. Uh, but anyway. Uh, in his case, it's not because he became annoying with it. He actually has been very low-key about it. But then again, he's very low-key on social media in general. Uh, he's not the kind of artist that like oversaturates social media or anything like that so you know brownie points for that but of all the artists that have given in to ai uh generated images that's the one that disappointed me the most right like this this was an artist that i that i respected and admired and saw as a role model and um and that really 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 kind of you know, was like, oh man, I, I, I looked up to you, man. You, you were like, you were like a full-on role model to me. So that, that's kind of why I, uh, that one would be my roundhouse kick to the balls, as you put it, because it really is a matter of, dude, I, I, uh. -uh. It, it honestly kind of got me harder than I thought it would. You know, the, the, when he kind of gave into it. So, yeah. That one. What about you guys? What's, uh... Who disappointed you? Yeah, yeah, you were supposed to fight them, not join them, and... And to me, it's like... Okay, dude, I get it. I get it. It's difficult. It's it's hard to stay in this fight. It takes energy. It's very, very easy to give in, to give up, and stuff like that. But come on, this is not a fight we can give up.
You know, you know what really, really sucks? Um... This... This morning... I was working on... On the image that I, uh... Wait, I was kind of gobsmacked when it came out. I was basically on board with it. Then I kind of got a little angry when he low-key doubled down on it in a few videos. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't like, uh, um... I think I retweeted it once. Or, no, maybe I didn't retweet it. Maybe I posted on an Instagram story, but you don't have history on that, right? Like, you have history on Instagram of the stories you've posted? You do. Let me, let me see. Probably not on desktop. Since Instagram does seem to consider those of us that are on desktop unpure. Uh, let's see. Okay. I'm gonna have to look at it. Wait, maybe here? My activity. Okay. Uh. Oh, yeah. Um. Wait, wait, let me see if this one was. Um. Oh, okay. Here it was. From uh, I'll give you guys the link to to the artist that I that posted it originally, you know, to give credit. But it says, <clears throat> as you know, there are artists out here who have been. Oh, and the re the reason I'm reading this is because this pretty much is my position right now when it comes to AI art and why I am like, okay, I. If you are, like, dealing with AI art at, right now, we, we just can't be friends. Um, so, anyway, it says, as you... Wait, I should not be focused on this woman's crotch. <laughs> like, it's, just like, it's like, like, okay, while I read this, let's, you know, check out this woman's... Uh... Okay, so, <clears throat> as you know, there are artists out there here, who have been fighting for our rights to create without fear of predatory companies or gen AI users scraping from us any every change they get. I think it was chance, but whatever. Here's the important part. We have been fighting tirelessly for more than half a year now, and this is the part that got to me. I will absolutely no longer entertain devil's advocate conversations. I've heard them all, they are all the same, and they are weak as fuck. I have not heard anything new in the pro-gen AI art camp. And in the end, everything breaks down to, cause I wanna? That doesn't fly, and I'm glad there are strikes, okay, blah blah blah. Basically, it's, yes, all these, all these people with devil's advocate positions, all these people basically going, yeah, but, you know, let's not be so absolute. What if we consider... No, no. All these considerations, all these devil's advocate positions, all these, but what about if we learn to... No. No, those are all hurting us at this moment. And... And... And no. No, absolutely not. The end. So... It is, it is definitely going in legal directions, but here's the problem. We are all a little compromised in this sense. For example, Adobe totally went full AI and, and like they, they shadow did that shit, right? Like suddenly... Photoshop is all about AI. 
and all the videos you you see on YouTube are just you know AI generated images from Photoshop and that just kind of that kind of snuck up on me and I, I never it, it's been a very long time since I thought of Photoshop as the good guy like that that hasn't happened in a very long time like you know oh no Adobe did something evil who would have thought like no 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 uh, I mean come on it's it's Adobe nobody nobody here is acting surprised that Adobe did something evil that that's not like but at the same time it's like well here I am in Photoshop I, I can't just stop using Photoshop right now on a whim. I like I have to do my homework on Clip Studio Paint. Like check out what's going on with Clip Studio Paint these days. Um But I think I think I think right now my best candidate is Coral Painter. But that shit takes time. You don't just switch programs. Like, like I remember when I switched from Photoshop to Clip Studio Paint, it took me a while to get used to that. And then when I switched back to Photoshop, that took me a while to get used to it. So at least for the immediate season. Miss Flox, hello. Yeah, I... I love Clip Studio Paint, but I stopped using it when I got a new computer and I forgot to export all my brushes. And so all my all my brushes kind of stopped working and I needed to get work done. And well, we pay for Photoshop in this house because Pew is a photographer, so you know, she uses Photoshop for photo editing and stuff like that. So so it's like, well, you know, I'm already paying for it, so might as well just go ahead and use it. But... But yeah, it basically... Sorry, I'm, I'm checking something here. Where is your body? Okay. But when I... Yeah, when when I changed the Clip Studio Paint, I was lost for a while. It kind of took me a while to get used to it. And then when I switched back to Photoshop again, it was like, you know, learning how to roller skate again. So right now, my... Right now, my biggest candidate, honestly, is Coral Painter. Because... While Coral Painter is the most expensive option of all of them, Coral Painter is the only one that has uh, a business model that doesn't bug the fuck out of me. Right? Coral Painter is expensive as fuck. But Coral Painter is you pay once. That's it. The program is yours to use forever. And you only pay again if you want their yearly update. So you basically buy Coral Painter by the year. So like, for example, I have Coral Painter 2019. Um, and I can use Coral Painter 2019 forever. And I only have to pay again if I want to use Coral Painter 2023. And then I can update from 2019 to 2023 with a discount. Um, but Coral Painter is expensive. It's very, very expensive. Cost like 400 bucks. But when I bought it, when I bought 2019, it was on Humble Bundle for 25 bucks. So right now I'm just going to stick with uh, Coral Painter 2019. But like I said, it takes time to get used to using another program. And I can't do that right now. I have too much to do. But 
I need to look into what Clip Studio Paint's new business model is, as in how it actually works. Because since they have the, the subscription, the subscriptions coming up, well, if I'm gonna abandon, you know, if I'm gonna stop painting on Photoshop, it's actually not because of the subscriptions, because of their, you know, marriage to AI now. Um, but if I'm gonna move away from Photoshop to use another program, well, you know, I don't want to just jump into another subscription. And besides, who am I kidding? You never abandoned Photoshop. Even when I was going full in Clip Studio Paint, I still used Photoshop for photo editing and for color correction and stuff like that. You never you never get out of Photoshop. You, you never abandon it. You just stop paying for it and now use it pirate. That, that's what you do. By the way, I'm not advocating for piracy. You know, just in case anybody listening is, is just, you know, uh, did a web normal just to advocate for piracy? No, I didn't. I didn't say anything like that. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw, because Mal makes a very good point. Um, personally, I don't think abandoning programs helps. It only hurts us in our work. I think a way to actually fight is to speak out about it, make videos, post about why it's bad. Um, recently, Adobe made a tweet uh, saying like, hey, uh, what would you say to like a, a digital artist that's just getting started? <laughs> And if you look at all the replies, it's like like 90% of the replies. And by the way, if you guys go check out Adobe's Twitter, unless they deleted it, which they might have because it went so bad. Um, uh, but 90% of the replies are basically like, yeah, what I would say to somebody new in digital art is don't use Adobe products. Like, they we re Oh, wow. They, that really did not go the way they thought it was going to go. They might have even deleted that tweet. But if you go check out Adobe's Twitter, it, it was recent. It was like yesterday or something. So what's everybody got planned for the weekend? Damn, you went far for that one, man, with no screen name. You, like, you, like, worked it. You know, A for effort. Definitely A for F. <laughs> you have standards to maintain, of course.
Potato chips, nice. Yeah, version 3 is going to have the subscription. And you see, that's the problem. Man with no screen name. Uh, yeah, like after version 2, sorry. Inspiration breakdown is, is correct. After version 2, you have to pay subscription. And the problem is, I know myself. I'm going to want the latest and greatest. The, the thing is that whenever whenever I start like reading about these discussions in regards of um, you're learning to use stable diffusion ew That's very pertinent to all the conversations that we've been having. this i think it was this morning i'm sorry when you wake up at 3 a.m like your days kind of start fusing into each other um so i don't know if i saw this yesterday or today or at some point during the week i i don't know they days have no meaning to me i just make sure i don't miss my appointments and that's it anyway um at some point during this week, I was uh, I was checking out this this video game uh, that the company that made it used AI uh, in making some assets and stuff like that, and basically they had to kind of apologize, well, sort of not kind of but sort of. What they basically had to do is they had to make this really long post where they explain to people all the things that they did with AI. And so they had to say, okay, look, this in the game was done with AI, and this in the game was done with AI, and this in the game, and they had to explain why. So like, okay, you know, we needed like paintings for all the apartments that are in the game, so we made those paintings using AI and we had to, um, and basically it was like this huge apology post of them explaining all the things they did in AI and why, right? Like kind of, uh, um, yeah, 
Jamie, hello. Oh, so nice to see you. Everybody, um, uh, Jamie here is from Eldritch Works. Uh, basically, they are the... Wait, let me find it. Uh, so remember, you guys, I... Oh, sorry, something got in my eye. Okay, wait. So, uh, Eldritch... Eldritch... Ah, I'm sorry, I'm trying. <laughs> Eldritch Works uh, are the, the company I told you guys about last week. And um, for, wi for which this image is being made. Uh... But I think the Kickstarter the Kickstarter page is not is not is not up yet, right? I'm, I'm waiting for that one. But yeah. Anyway, so yeah, this I was actually gonna tell you guys earlier about this image. Uh, this morning. Well, I don't want to say I had a, a a freak out because that's not really what happened. I had a freak out. Sounds like I had some sort of mental breakdown. That's not really what happened. But this morning I was working on this image to finish it up and since uh a lot of it is 3d i started thinking like oh my god does maybe do, do maybe parts of this image look like they were done in ai and and i started kind of like i said not freaking out but kind of looking at it and thinking oh no um but you know in the end i kind of just you know the like I've got like a hundred gigabyte folder of the whole process of this thing and the 3D art for it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was kind of a, a bummer that now we as artists kind of have to concern ourselves with like, oh no, are people going to think I used AI to do it? You know, I mean, like, isn't, isn't that like a huge bummer? But anyway, yes. Um, no, it like like what happened was that like I since I do the the stuff in three D, and then you know bring it into Photoshop, retouch it, work with it, kind of do a lot of different things with it. I, I kind of like had this little brief moment this morning where I was questioning my own method, right? Like, like, oh no, is this is this method valid? I'm like, what the fuck? You made you made all the 3D art for this, like, come on. But yeah, you kind of start to get these questions going off in in your head about your own process and if it's you know if, if you can justify your own process, of course, but. It's kind of it's kind of like when you go into a store and the store security starts following you around as if you were going to steal and you start to feel bad even though you're not stealing anything. Like like you start going like like oh no. Oh no, I feel guilty. I mean, I'm not stealing, but I feel guilty. Why? I don't know if that happens to anybody else. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's a product of growing up with restrictive parents. That, that's probably it. Okay. 
walking at night behind a person, I just try, try to cross the street so they don't think I'm following them, which I am, of course, but I don't want them to notice. I, I, I've never, yeah, that's one I've never really kind of felt. I, you know, whenever, whenever I go for a walk, if there's somebody in front of me or something like that, I never really kind of get that urge to, When you have OCD, you actually believe you are stealing? And you turn yourself in? But what do you say when you turn yourself in? That you committed thought crimes? I'd, I'd be all like, miss, miss, come on, we're busy, please. Anyway, uh, Any plans for the weekend? I'm going to have a freelancer weekend. I'm going to do a freelancer weekend. leg goes all the way down there. Uh, th they fear the thought so much that they obsessively, that they look obsessively for those thoughts. I have to admit, I don't really know a lot about how OCD works. Um... Because most of the people in my life that claim to have OCD, uh, mostly they just obsess over little details and stuff like that. And I know that's not what it's all about. So I kind of just tend to... Just like, yep, yeah, yeah, you know. I'll, I'll leave you to it. But uh, yeah, this weekend, okay, this weekend I plan to finish this image. Um, I have another 
3D image that I'm working on for Eldritch. Um, uh, which I am very much looking forward to. Because, so, see, here's what happened. So, I had made a version of the image uh, that that I just showed you, the, the one with the rat. And I'd made a version of that image that you can see here. Um, wait, I'm, I'm waiting for it to open. So, so, like, this is the kind of thing that makes me go, Lula, hello! How are you? I haven't seen you in a couple of weeks, I think. How have you been? So, so this image before was a lot simpler, right? Like I made a much, much simpler version of this image. Wait, I'll show you. So the first 3D version I made of this image uh, was this, right? So this was like the first 3D version I made of the image. And I made my scenery on top of this. But then I I worked on the next scenery piece, which was not this one. This one is the same one. Uh, but this one, which is the next one I'm working on, which is this one. on its way so yeah this one and when I kind of was working on this one I kind of started feeling like the other one was not up to to the level you know um so I kind of started feeling like ah oh, man I wish I had done the other one better so I stopped this one went back to the other one which Which is here. And and just said, you know what? Let's make this one better. And so um and so redid all those elements and then finished it up this morning. You know. So we did that, right? And you can see here that the scenery really kind of you know, uh, like the 3D really helped out um, with the image. So we ended up with this. Here it is with like two little characters in the background. Uh, and here it is complete. So this weekend I'm going to finish the other one. I need to finish this image that I'm making right here. And I need to finish... Uh, where is it? Is it this one? And I need to finish the image with the cables. So I need, I need to finish this one. Uh, so I need to finish those three images. Well, actually, I don't have to finish the sewer one. That one I just have to kind of advance. Uh, I have to finish this one. I have to finish um, the one I'm working on right now. And then I have to make sketches for another company that I can't talk about. So... That's my weekend. As for uh, Spider-Man, we do want to go watch it. We just don't have anywhere to go watch it yet. But it's not it's not subtitled in City Plaza, is it? Yeah. So so we 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 don't have it subtitled, and I will not see that movie dubbed. I refuse. So, we might have to wait for it to come to a streaming service. Because I'm not watching it dubbed. No way. I would rather just not watch anything.
Yeah, we would do... We would go to Viva Envigado, but... Um... Okay, we would go to Viva Envigado. I would not go to Vizcaya because... Ew. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. Um, no. I mean, I, I, I don't mean to bully you, but but absolutely, I'm bullying you for going to Iskaja. Like, I, I don't mean to bully you, but but you, you deserve it. What, what, what do you mean C? All I see is that both of you are cheap. Like, like that's that's it. That's that's all I'm seeing. Like, I, this isn't the win you guys think it is. Although, although, I would rather go to Vizcaya than where Mao goes, which is Unicentro. Oh, that was like, oh, no, 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 no. I would rather go to Vizcaya uh, than Unicentro. Like, Mao goes to Unicentro, and I'm seriously considering just never talking to him again. But anyway, 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 uh, seriously, though, um, the thing is, uh, this weekend, Pew is going to be taking photos of pets in City Plaza. So for those of you watching that are not here in Medellin, City Plaza is a shopping center, and uh, there's, um, there's a pet and animal supply business there called Casa del Granjero and Pew is going to be there uh, Saturday afternoon uh, taking photos of pets of people's pets you know you can go and get you know a, a photo taken of well I suppose your dog or whatever animal it is you're going through the shopping center with so so that's pretty much what we're going to be doing this weekend um Yesterday, she was taking photos of dogs at a... What is that? A dog rescue? A shelter. A shelter. Thank you. Yeah, she was taking photos of dogs at a dog shelter to help them get adopted. Those were really cute. I mean, they're, they're always cute, but but the uh, yesterday it was old dogs. Yeah, so so basically they got a bunch of old dogs at the shelter and they needed photos of them to see if, you know, maybe people will take them home. And um... oh, Mo, it is it is a lot of. Well, OK, I'm not going to say it's a lot of fun because I don't do it, actually. Right? Like, like she takes the photos, but. On a couple of occasions, I've been her assistant, and, well, at least being the assistant is a lot of fun. You get to interact with the doggies, and and um, tomorrow I'm going to be her assistant. Yeah, yeah, it is a lot of fun from our perspective. I guess it's fun from her perspective, I hope, because if it's not, I don't know why she insists on doing it. <laughs> but, 
But anyway, if any of you have a doggy and you're in the area, make sure to pass by and get a photo of your doggy taken. Okay, anyway, back to uh, Lula and Miss Flux, who saw Spider-Man. Okay. Give us your non-spoiler review. Because tomorrow, we're going to... Oh, no, we can't go to the movies tomorrow after that because you're going to have all the equipment there. Yeah. Okay, okay, no, 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 no. Don't, don't give us reviews. We'll lose Mao. And you know how fickle Mao is. He sees orange juice and he's out, so... It's, a, it's like very, very easy to lose Mao when he's hanging out. Can you believe Mao is like... He's like one of the few people I know that still like... Like he has phone conversations. Phone conversations. By hearing that, you'd think he's like 60 years old or something. But no. He's actually only 50. When the first one is so good, you usually fear the sequels. Okay, that's a that's a fun topic. So, movies where the first one was really, really good, and then the sequel let you down. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Ten out of ten, best movie ever. I really liked it compared to the first one. I prefer this one. Oh, okay. Okay, but let's see. Movies where the sequel let you down. I'm very, very curious where this is gonna go. Movies where they lost you in the sea. Uh, phone conversations are a European thing too. from Great Britain and Alex from the UA. Uh, UA would be somewhere. Love scaring millennial Americans by just ambushing them on the phone. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine it's. But wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be scarier to like? Force them into a video call. That like, like it isn't that you know the ultimate kind of. Uh... I know because when when I when I teach uh, at the university and I have virtual classes, getting my students to turn on their webcam is like asking them to oh oh okay wow never would have guessed that one uh 
getting them to turn on their webcam, like, I think I will a lot easier get a kidney from my students. Like, if I just told them, like, look, I'm never going to ask you to put you turn on your webcam again, but you all have to mail me your kidneys, both of them. I'm pretty sure I would have a surplus of kidneys here in my house. Not just two kidneys per student. They'd probably send me extra kidneys. Yeah, I know it's gross, but that's what they'll do to not put on their webcam. They really, they really, really despise putting on their webcam. I could not get a single student this semester to put on their webcam. And next semester, then I'm going to be doing virtual classes again. I have to see how I'm going to get them to do it because, yeah, I don't know. Zoom meetings are over. What year is this? Um... Man, I haven't seen Zoom be used in a while. Every, every kind of... Yeah, Lula, you're included there. <laughs> it's... It's... It's super... Weird. Because... You never turn on your webcam at the daily meetings in the morning. Well, you might want to consider it. Because for... The person... Well, oh, no, no, no. Okay. You might want to consider it if the person, uh, it, well, well, the thing is, Night Cal, I might be able to do that, but I wouldn't feel okay doing that because that's, I mean, that, that's just kind of, I don't like blackmailing my students with a grade. Right. Um, what I could do is I could use it for attendance. But the thing is, and I'm sorry, Lula, I know you're in the chat room. Uh, so for those of you in the chat room, L Lula was my uh, um, student last semester and she was wonderful. She was great. Nothing of this applies to her. See, there you go. I got you, Lula. Um, but all the others. Oh, no. So here's the thing. They, they they have lost the fear. Like the fear that students normally have that causes them to sometimes, you know, obey. That's not a thing anymore. That is not a thing anymore. You can you can like like i would be there in class and i would say something like okay turn on your webcams it is mandatory so turn them on now and not only would they not do it but they'd just not say anything like just eh, nothing not like just no nothing no response no nothing it's just um, it's it's just you, you can't threaten them it doesn't work uh, and the thing is that was the other thing I was going to get to Lula if a student tells you well I don't have a webcam or my webcam doesn't work you can't really you, you can't really fault them on that one right like if they don't have a webcam that's that's it end of discussion right like like what are you gonna do then um i am trying to figure out ways yeah that makes more sense i'm trying to figure out ways to kind of uh force them to use their webcam next semester uh fortunately since i work directly with the director I'm gonna see what 
what she thinks I should do and basically get her authorization to maybe actually um, uh, again I don't I don't wanna I don't want to threaten my students with grades but not because it's not because I, I think it's ethically wrong <laughs> like no um, it's because if you threaten your students with grades, then you're also opening the possibility that they can win the course with things that have nothing to do with work. Let, let me explain. So, for example, imagine... Okay, so the class I teach, which is, uh, was well, not supposed to be an extra class, but let's, you know, let's call it like it is. It's an extra class. So it's not the main workshop class. The class I teach is only 6% of the 100% of their semester. Now, the thing that happens with that class is that if you don't have a good semester going on, and you fail those 6% extra classes, you can easily throw away your semester. It actually happens. Uh, it happened last semester. I, unfortunately, Lula, if you're curious, I can't tell you who because, you know, I have to respect their privacy, but it, it does happen and it can happen. And, and, and it does happen. But it also works the other way around, right? I've seen plenty of students that, uh, oh, but nobody from your class, no, nobody from your classroom, you know, it's, it's from the other classroom, but anyway. Um, but here's the thing. It also works the other way around. I've seen, and actually more commonly, students that maybe do not do that well in workshop, but save the semester because of those extra classes, right? Like they have, um, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they flunk workshop, but they do really well in the extra classes. And so they end up winning the semester. Thing is, I don't think that should happen, right? And I don't think people should be able to win their semester for reasons that are not academic. Right. So I don't I don't think you should be able to be a bad student and just win because you went to all the classes or because you paid attention in some extra class that didn't have anything to do with the main class or because you did attendance and you, you know, did stuff like that. So. So when when you do that kind of thing, right, when, when you open up the possibility that like, OK, there's a grade attached to your attendance or in this case to you putting on your webcam you're opening the door for, okay, this can also save you if you're not a good student. I personally don't think that bad students should win the semester. Um, most of the students watch the class on their phone anyway, Miss Flux. Which is absurd when you're watching a class that's about illustration you know, to watch it on your phone. Because you watch it on your phone, you can barely see what's going on. Trying to teach Photoshop menus and stuff like that. And you're watching it on your phone. Oh, thank you, Nightkel. That's very, that's very flattering. <laughs> yeah. You know what the funny thing is, Nightkel? Of the people active in the chat room right now, only two of you have not been my student. <laughs> like, all the rest of you have had me as a teacher. But, 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 so if I, if I can, and if I'm ready next Tuesday, we're going to start the, 
I don't know what to call it yet, but we're going to start the perspect online perspective course. So for those of you that arrived a little bit later, um, I want to record a, um, a perspective course uh, for my YouTube channel, right? I want to record a perspective course for my YouTube channel. And basically, the only way I'm going to make the time to do that is if I record the course during my stream. So next Tuesday, I'm going to try out for the first time that the stream is me recording the perspective course. So it's going to take obviously more than one session, you know, but I'm basically, uh, if it works out, then on Tuesdays, it's going to be like, you know, a uh, uh, learning day. So it's going to be like a class. I'm going to, I'm going to do the whole recording and it's going to be live. And if anybody here wants to learn perspective, then absolutely check it out next Tuesday. I will be uploading them to YouTube, but of course it will take, um, it will take some time before they get uploaded to YouTube because I have to edit them. But if you want, you know, the live experience of the course, then there you go. So next Tuesday. Anyway, Mao, yeah, like students, they have they have no fear of academic consequences anymore. I had a student. This was actually one of uh, Lula's classmates um, that showed up empty-handed uh, uh, on a day of uh, you know on, on a day he had to deliver the assignment. You know, entrega, uh, and when asked. He literally answered that he just didn't feel like it. Right? And, and he didn't even say it in private. Like, he, he said it in front of the rest of the classroom. Like, yeah, you know, I, I, just, I just didn't, you know. In Spanish, he said, no estaba de ánimos. And that's it. Like he 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 showed up empty-handed because he just wasn't in the mood. You don't remember that, Lula? You were there, but maybe you didn't notice because you were focused on your own stuff. Well, see, that's the thing, Night Cow. Um, that particular student uh, ended up uh, abandoning the course. So, so uh, you know. But you see, that that's even the thing, Mao. Like, quitting the university doesn't even put you out of the competition. It's not like you need a title to work in this. 
But then again, a title is not going to guarantee your work either. So there is that. But, 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 I'm gonna say something that's very out of character for me, but I totally mean this. Um, okay. Now, th this is, what I'm gonna say is gonna be a little bit weird, because I have, like, several different generations of students here in my chat room, which is actually very flattering. Thank you, guys. But... Here's, here's, here's the thing. And I've said this before. After... You know, like, uh, Mao and Miss Flox generation, quality of, of the students started going down and down and down and down. But, no joke, for the past two or three semesters, it's been going back up. It's been going back up. Like, um, two semesters ago, we started getting brilliant students back. It was a big classroom, most of them sucked, but there were like two or three students that were actually quite brilliant. Last semester, well, not the one that just ended, but the one before that, it was about half and half. We had half the, the classroom was brilliant, and the other half of the classroom was uh, horrible. And this semester that just ended, uh, at least in the classroom that I was teaching, honestly, no joke, about 80% of the classroom was brilliant, and I've started getting back something that had stopped happening before, and it's that illustrators started um, reappearing. Uh, il illustrators started reappearing. So, um, be because that that had not happened, uh, that like that was super rare now. Uh, but last semester, I had uh, one, I mean, like, like, that I would say, holy crap, uh, kids got skills. Um, let's see, there was Lula, there was Carly, there was Mariaka. Um, and then there were other students that maybe not the best at drawing but they can they can work good with images right um so it's 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 gotten better the thing is i i kind of talked about that with with uh, uh the other teachers and asked them what they thought about it and that conversation gets nowhere because they all kind of blame it on the pandemic uh that like oh yeah you know the pandemic lowered quality but it's going back up but i, I don't know i i'd like to think maybe there's a more interesting reason to it but that's as far as my knowledge goes but yeah we started getting quality back i love when your course was some sort of some kind of secret to the people in my career path we have to get special permission H have you have you been uh Uh, uh, have you seen how that career has changed? Because it seems to be very, very different from how it was. 
Uh, have you have you seen that? It's it seems to have changed a lot. It it's it's quite different now. Yeah, that I I used to like when when the class okay okay so maybe Lula doesn't know what I'm talking about here, so um, let's give Lula a little history lesson. So, uh, and and for those of you that you know need a little bit of context about what we're talking about, so the university where I teach, which is graphic design, right? Um, it, uh, I used to teach a class called Digital Illustration. And that was something called a module, right? So modules were that after six semester, you basically get to choose what the focus of your semester was. Um, so I had uh, a module that I created that was called Digital Illustration. And it was basically a whole semester that you just did digital illustration with me. Um, and it was a very fun course to teach. I love teaching it. It doesn't exist anymore. They, they kind of got rid of that, which is why I'm explaining it to, you know, people like, uh, Lula and stuff like that, because they, they never got to take that. Anyway, when I started it, uh, the people from the university, like the people in charge at that time, um, they didn't really have much confidence that the course was going to work. So they, they actually didn't let me uh, um, teach it. Like I passed the proposal and they didn't let me do it. But eventually the person that was the director at that time uh, quit slash got fired. And in kind of like a last act of anger or rebellion, she approved my course. And so the people at the university at that time didn't really kind of think that it was going to work out. They, they, I mean, they didn't want me to teach it anyway. She just kind of approved it. Like, um, like, fuck it. You know, if I'm leaving, I'm approving this guy's course. And so she did. So when I started the course, they really kind of didn't think that it was going to last because back then um the way those courses worked uh um was that basically your course was maintained open by how many people got into it right like how many people uh signed up for your course because you know students could choose which one they wanted to do that semester so they didn't really think people were going to sign up to to my digital art course and so basically when I went to start it up they they were like yeah yeah do whatever you want you know whatever it's not gonna last anyway so <laughs> so because of that I got to do stuff with the course that no other person like no other teacher could do with their course. So one of the things I could do with the course is that the first version of the course, the first semester I taught was invitation only. For real, like I, I like the first semester I taught that course was invitation only. It, it was only students that I personally selected and asked if they wanted to take the course. Um, after that first semester, they uh they kind of realized that like oh um you know you like it, it did kind of work out people did want to take it so after that course they didn't after that semester they didn't let me do it invitation only anymore but then i said that i wanted to do it with the students having to present a portfolio to take the course and they approved that so students had to present a portfolio in order to take my course i think I think Mao got that version, if I'm not mistaken. Uh...
And then after that, when they kind of realized that people were actually taking it and stuff like that, they said, okay, okay, you just have to teach it like a normal course, you know, with people signing up, um, you know, normally. And... Oh, okay, okay, so that's the version you got. Oh, I, I wanted to continue doing it that way, but <laughs> they, they were not going to let me do that forever. That's a good dog. Yeah. Um It used to be it used to be that way. Uh Miss Fox. It used to be like like when I Oh, this is gonna make me sound so old. But when I, when I presented myself to the university, you actually had to um, present your ICFIS, which for those of you from other parts of the world, it's like uh, what in the U.S. is the SATs. So you have to have a minimal ICFIS score. Uh, otherwise, you just didn't pass right off the bat. And you had to do... Uh, uh, a test they had an admissions test and you had to um, do an interview now we just pay When I had the university interview, I went with the UPE school uniform as that way it's easier to pass. <laughs> you do realize, Lula, that they would have known that you were an UPE student anyway, right? <laughs> like, with or without the uniform, they would have known.
Well. <laughs> but wait. So, they never taught you fractions at home? Okay, let, let's let's hear this story. He's a chunky bar here. I'm very intrigued. I don't know if anybody else is, but I'm very intrigued. I studied in 11 different schools, right? So when I got... But I bet all of them had fractions. Anyway. So I'll continue. I'll continue. It's like I'm getting offended that they didn't teach you fractions. Okay. So when I got homeschooled for a year, after coming back from the Netherlands, I had to take a test to see what year I should go in. And basically, I skipped the grade where they teach fractions, so I never looked back. What do you mean you're not going to learn fractions now? For an adult mind, fractions should be just... ...watching a 20-minute YouTube tutorial. Like, I mean, this... It's not complicated. I get that for like a 12 year old, it's probably complicated. Do you need to? Yes, you need to learn fractions. Yes, fractions is one of the useful things from school. See, here's the thing, Mal. Here's the thing. I'd be willing to bet you do actually know fractions. It's like with English, right? Like when we're here, in, in Colombia and people say like I don't know English and then and then you check and they 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 actually do they just you know they they're just embarrassed to speak English in public but but they understand English and you know they 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 get the general idea of English like I'm not gonna tell you that I'm like the algebra master or anything like that right like I, I am most certainly not but, you know, you understand what it is if I tell you one-third, right? Like, if I tell you, okay, Mao, so, uh, we have, um, uh, two quarters, which is the same as one-half, right? You get that, right? Right? You, you, you get that. Which is the same as four-eighths, right? Oh my god. So it's, it's not that you didn't learn fractions. You didn't learn... What? <laughs> what, what is it you didn't learn, Mal? You're not coming off looking great from this conversation let me tell you that like you're not you're not looking amazing from this conversation what is the math you learn in grade eight i think in grade eight i started algebra so um, 
if I had to give a name to it, I'd say basic equations. You also never read the Gabriel Garcia Marquez books. They make you read in grade eight. Well, there you're not missing out on anything, but. No, I think, I think everybody. Okay, here's a fun thing for the chat. I think everybody has a subject in school that they absolutely forgot. Because, wait, trigonometry was, I think, well, maybe it was trigonometry. Because I think, tri no, but trigonometry, I saw it in, I think, grade 9 or 10. Um, but anyway, I think everybody in school had a subject that they just absolutely erased. Like, like, just... There's, there's subjects that I remember more or less about, right? Like social studies. I remember some of it. Um, algebra. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, basic equations, you know, rule of three, that kind of stuff. Um, statistics. I remember some of that. Spanish. I remember a lot of that. Philosophy. I remember a lot of that. Um, but chemistry, the only thing I remember from chemistry is who the teacher was. Like I remember is the teacher and I remember the classroom and otherwise I, it is blank. I, I could seriously just not have gone at all. Like, if you told me, like, dude, you didn't actually go to chemistry. You made it all up in your mind. I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Because I do not remember anything from chemistry. Like, just nothing at all. But I think everybody has something like that from school. A, a, a subject that they just might as well not have gone. And, and for me, it was chemistry. What is it for you guys? What subject from school could you just not have gone and, and, and... You were so good at chemistry that you almost studied chemistry instead of graphic design? Huh? And Miss Flux almost studied biology? I almost studied architecture. You don't remember anything from social sciences. Okay. Wait, so like your geography is, is, you know, no, you have no geography knowledge at all. Pew almost studied music. Where? Try to figure out if I knew that. Huh. You think you know a person. Home economics. I also studied in a religious school that didn't want to teach us philosophy. So I had to learn that one on my own because I actually kind of liked it later in life. Huh. Wow. I went to Catholic school, but we got philosophy. Your parents didn't like the idea, so you just never tried. Oh, okay. Oh, the other thing uh, I almost studied was advertising.
Yeah, I almost studied advertising. My dad really wanted me to get into advertising because he was a marketing consultant. So he really wanted me to get into advertising. I love his face. <laughs> I love his face. Factorización. Let's see what that's called in English. Factorización in English. Factoring. Oh, okay. I can't say I've ever used it either, so can't really give you a hard time for that one. It is useful, Mao. It is useful. Just maybe not for you. I mean, you're not. You're not a. Uh, you were into the idea of studying interior design, but it didn't exist here back then. Yeah, yeah. Th there's there are several career choices that I would have taken if they existed back when I was starting. Um. Unfortunately, illustration is still not not an option. So there's there's that. No, you know what, Miss Flox? I think I think that one of the things that I have noticed with AI is there are certain areas of art that seem to be more in favor of AI than others. Let, let, let me let me tell you what I mean. Areas of art that don't seem to focus so much on 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 high quantity, high speed, um, and where there's less people involved in the process, don't seem to be so into AI. Um, well, at the same time, okay. So, for example. 
my area, which is role playing games, I can safely say that the people that I work with, um, I, I, I can't see them using AI. Like, uh, some of them I've spoken to, and some of them I don't even need to speak to. Like, some of them, like, like it's just not really, like, like in a lot of the the, the role playing community is definitely in favor of human uh, artists and stuff like that. The video game industry really seems to be kind of divided in that sense. The, the, this face is awful. Uh, the, the, the video game industry doesn't seem to be that against it, right? Because they need a lot of work done quick and cheap. But the role-playing game industry seems to be a lot more in favor of human uh, uh, artists and stuff like that, right? Um, I have seen a lot of AI stuff in, unfortunately, in editorial, in, in books. It is, I have seen way, 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 way too much, um, way too many, sorry, publishers going with uh, AI book covers and stuff like that. But fortunately, since publishing also favors a lot um, of a, a like, for example, Tor, Tor Publishing has already gotten a little bit of a bad reputation because they've already been caught using AI for a lot of their covers. Um, but the good thing about the illustration community, and th that's where it's important to make a difference between the concept art community and the illustration community, because the illustration community is absolutely not having it. Like, um, whenever, whenever I've seen a book, like a, a, a book publication or something get caught using AI for their covers or stuff like that, immediately immediately you see them like get called out on it so as far as illustration goes it's not really but like it, it does get used and it does happen but it normally does get called out and stuff like that i i think it's a lot more dangerous in industries like video game and and stuff like that um, where they, you know, where you got a staff of like 300 people and you definitely need to get rid of, you know, like if you can get rid of a couple of artists, um, and save some money and definitely some time, then that's great and stuff like that. But when it comes to role-playing games, the companies that make role-playing games are way, way, way smaller. And, well, I guess in a certain way, 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 way more human, even before AI. So, so you, you get a lot more of, of this kind of human interaction and stuff like that. And so you see a lot less of it. It still happens, but I don't see it going into AI as heavily or as willingly as as I see the video game industry going. Um, and when they do, they get called out. So I'm, I'm very, very lucky in that so far, none of my clients at all seem to have any kind of inclination towards AI. And I am very, very, very appreciative of that and very thankful of that. Um, I'm sure eventually, eventually it will happen. Uh, and when it does, then, you know, I'll definitely deal that with, you know, with that when it happens. But for now, it's been a good experience. Um, so yeah, yeah, uh, I think, I think that it has to do a lot with what industry you're in and, and I think 
Role playing game. Okay, role playing games. When it comes to not like the huge things like Wizard of the Coast, right? Because I, I could totally see Wizards of the Coast just going, "Hey, we're gonna start using AI." Uh, like I could totally see that. Do you think it's because the tabletop role playing game crowd are more de democratically minded and collaborative in their mindset? Absolutely. I, th I think it's it's the size. I mean, if you think about it, it's a much more human uh, thing. And, th and that's why I say that I would not be surprised if something like Wizards of the Coast suddenly started going like, oh, we're going to do some things in AI. Don't freak out, but we're going to do some things in AI. Because Wizards of the Coast is enormous, right? So if I worked for Wizards of the... Like, okay, way back in... Ooh, over 10 years. Back in D&D &D 4th edition. I worked with Wizards of the Coast. I never even spoke to anybody from Wizards of the Coast. Like, that never happened. I I remember the person that was my contact. I remember their name. I never spoke with them directly. There were a few emails. And, uh, and that's it, right? Like, I never, ever had any kind of contact or any kind of direct contact with these people it was just you know you speak through a representative you sign an nda you do your job you get paid goodbye and thank you and that's it it's a huge company and even then if i spoke to somebody it wasn't somebody making the decisions it was somebody that had a boss and they spoke to their boss and then this happened and that happened and all that kind of stuff but if you look at tabletop role uh tabletop role playing game companies that publish independently we're talking about companies like man if you find a company with more than 10 people you're talking about like a juggernaut in the tabletop role playing game industry the different companies i've worked for I don't think any of them go over uh, 10 people. And, and even then, I'm just kind of generalizing because I don't. I think most of them are something around five, six people, stuff like that. And I worked on some pretty big ones, right? Like, um, uh, uh, I, for example, uh, I worked on the Pacific Rim role-playing game. I haven't been able to show you guys that because it hasn't come out yet because it's a Kickstarter, uh, which is funded, but it's not out yet. So I'll show you guys the Pacific, the illustrations I did for Pacific Rim when they come out, but it's not a secret. You know, Kickstarter is there, so I can say that, that there's a Pacific Rim role-playing game and that I worked on it. But even that company was, it's like... It's like something around 10 people. It's not, I don't think it even gets that far. So so the thing is when you have a company that's so small, you, you don't, you you don't, exactly, exactly. And, and so those companies, they stay a lot more human, right? Like they stay, they, they stay, I mean, there's there's plenty, you know, there's uh, Fantasy Flight, uh, um, Cobalt Press, uh, Green Ronin. Th those are probably pretty big. Paiso. Paiso is probably huge. But you do kind of get to maintain that sort of human element. And I think it also has a lot to do with the fact that role-playing games are... They're a human thing. Right? I, I know that sounds very deep and profound and maybe even dumb. But video games... And I love video games. I love video games. But video games are a machine. Role-playing games, the tabletop role-playing games, are a group of friends sitting down, be it live or online, talking it out. Right? It has this human element to it. You have to read. You have to roll dice. You have to talk to other people. You have to you make friends all that kind of stuff you see them even if you're playing online you 
most times you're going to see them. It has like this interaction element that makes it a very, as weird as it sounds, human hobby. Right? It's a very, very human hobby. It has that human element very much into it. Uh, um, actually, Jamie, th this image that I'm doing here is for Mongoose. Uh, Mongoose is like... Um, wait, there's see, send dream. In office, it's like six or seven people. Um, they hire a lot of freelancers. I, I don't know. Are we counting freelancers in this? But anyway, anyway. Um, tabletop role playing games are, are, are a very human kind of thing. And I think that can also have a little bit to do with it. You know, th this whole idea that, you know, humans are going to play the game. This isn't this isn't something you do with a machine. This is something you do with your friends and you talk about it and, and all that kind of stuff. And I think that has something to do with it, right? Like, like I think, and I, and I think that's part of the beauty of it that, it, that it is such a human thing. And, and I think that shows when you look at how games and, and all these things are made. Right? So... So, so I, I think it's much more appreciated, right? I think it's... And, and I think that also in the making of it... Um, now, now I, I, like, I can't speak, for example, you guys at Eldritch Works because... No, I'm speaking about about my work, so I don't want to sound like, and it's probably a joy for you guys to work with me. But you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that because it sounds like I'm very full of myself. But if you look at the experience of making these games, um, it 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 has that kind of human sort of experience built into it, right? Like you know, the the discussion. The, the process, the uh, the creation of the characters, the writing of of of, uh, of the description, all these kind of things are part of the process, and and I think those are things that if you lose them, I I think it's gonna show, right? Like, um. So if you kind of take away that element, that human element. From, from tabletop role-playing games, I think you're going to get a very sterile, uninteresting role-playing game. And... My opinion on this is that from my experience with video game companies, it's that you also have programmers who are much more rational in their mindset. Um, so they don't much care where the art comes from. Yeah, I can't I can't argue with that one, Mal, because when I've worked with programmers in video games, um, most of them could not give less of a fuck about how the video game looked like. As long as it worked, they were happy. Uh, I even had one of them say it to me in my face once like like he just flat out in a meeting told me like I, I don't care what the video game looks like um well you know thanks man you're a delight um we were literally learning how to post characters using stable diffusion and i shared a library of poses that are free to use so it was a tad more ethical and the programmer who was teaching us was like it's no different from using a reference and internally, I was like, no, but I wasn't going to argue in the meeting. I... I think a lot of it has to do with a problem that we artists have to deal with a lot. And that's another thing I think is an advantage that the tabletop role-playing game community has. And that video games used to have, but they don't have that problem anymore. They can't claim that problem anymore. And but don't worry, I'll explain. I'm not going to keep it cryptic.
artists artists have to deal with the the justification of their work constantly and i'm pretty sure that anybody here that is in any way related to art at some point in their life had to deal with the idea of justifying the existence of art and art as a job to somebody be it your parents be it somewhere at some point and anybody that has grown up with tabletop role-playing games had to deal with that too now here's the thing because when you play tabletop role-playing games at some point, you're going to have to explain that shit. Sure, there's people that are lucky enough to have parents that were also gamers. So maybe like, you know, they were brought up in a gamer friendly house. But growing up playing, you know, D&D and Shadowrun and, and, and all the tabletop role playing games that I grew up playing. It was constantly explaining like, first of all, what it was. And, but not just what it was, but why it was worth my time, right? Like when people would find out that I would spend um, every Sunday playing role-playing games with my friends, it always became an explanation of why it was worth spending my entire Sunday playing role-playing games with my friends, right? Like why, 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 why are you spending so much time on this video games also had that right like video games also had that sabrina so nice to see you again that the light got exceedingly blue as the day got darker yeah though Let, let's see if we can oh that's that's interesting very cyan let's go with that that one? No. Oh, I look like an Oompa Loompa on this one. Wait. Right. <laughs> we can have an Oompa Loompa stream. There you go. Total Oompa Loompa. Anyway. No, wait, wait. Not Oompa Loompa. Um, oh, shit. I, I, I totally messed up my reference there. Violet Bodegard. Right? I look like Violet Bodegard and just having, you know, eaten the... Yeah, the gum. So, you know... Uh, Oompa Loompas are going to roll me out to the squeezing room. To the juicing room, actually. To the juicing room. Okay, anyway. So, video games used to have that, right? Like, video games... We used to have to justify our video games. We used to have to justify our hobby of playing video games. And explain why we wanted to play video games and all that kind of stuff. And I don't think video games have that anymore. Right? Like, I don't, I don't think video games have that kind of problem anymore or at least not to the degree that we grew up with right like video games are a very lucrative industry now that doesn't really need to justify it as, as existence anymore it's if i'm not mistaken in the entertainment industry it's the most lucrative right like like um if i'm not mistaken gta 5 is like the the IP that has made the most money in history, like out earning any movie and and stuff like that. Like kissing wolves, hello. So so video games don't have to justify themselves anymore. Video games are like yeah, you know everybody. Nobody thinks that video games um uh. uh are a waste of time but tabletop role-playing games still have that attached to them right where you have to explain and justify and and people are gonna look at you like you're wasting your time and 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 you have to explain to other people why you want to spend like an entire weekend doing this or whatever and i think that kind of connects a little bit with us artists having to explain to the world like why art is worth doing and why art is worth uh, putting an effort 
into it and why art is worth um like keeping humans doing it and not just letting an ai do all of it right i think there's a little bit of a crossover there and having to justify that and, and i think that's why as a as an artist and an illustrator i feel very at home in the tabletop role-playing game industry because i i right like i don't i don't really in the tabletop role-playing game industry i don't really feel much of the need to explain like i i know i'm never gonna have to explain to any of the people that i work with why they need me doing the art and they can't just get mid journey to do it for them right um so i don't know maybe maybe i'm overthinking it or maybe i'm you know putting too much emotion into it or stuff like that but i do i do absolutely believe that some industries are being more appreciative of their artists than others and i can totally see the video game industry dropping the ball on that one and i think it already is dropping the ball on that one Ah, oh, shit, son, that got deep. Did you did you guys feel me, how deep I went? Like, I was deep in all your souls there. Wow, I was like... I was thrusting those emotions hard. Okay, it is time. So, let's, uh, before we go, let's check out what we've been doing lately. Okay, so today we were working on an image for Traveler RPG. This is by Mongoose Publishing. You can check out the work I've done for Traveler RPG over at mongoosepublishing.com. If I'm not mistaken. Anyway, um, so this week, let's look at our haul for this week. I, I can show you... Wait, no, 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 no. Save, please. Okay, thank you. Damn it. Okay, wait. So, this week, uh, for Mongoose, we did, uh, these two images. We did this image of, uh, basically jars of chemicals and stuff like that. Um... And wait, no, not this one. Uh, we did this image of like a terminal uh, thingy. Um, and the other image we did this week, which is my, uh, uh, this one was quite the, quite the joy. Uh, this image. For Eldritch Works, um, I'm very, I'm very pleased with this one. Um, if you guys want to see some details, wait. So this one you can check out. Um, wait, let me get you guys a link. Uh, what should we link? I guess following them on Twitter would be the the most useful. So, um, let, let's do that. Let's follow them on Twitter. So, there you go. There's the link to them on Twitter. Uh, 
because that's where they're most active. Actually, most role-playing games are very active on Twitter. Um, and from there, you can reach the website and all that kind of stuff, and they'll announce the Kickstarter when, when it's done. Okay, Kissing Wolves, see you Tuesday, I hope. And that one, check it out. Uh, have res so you can see all the details. So that one right here. Uh, I really like the, the way this one turned out. Very, very happy with it. My favorite part is the, the little rat bomb. It's cute until you realize that there's an explosive attached to that rack. Like, like, there is an explosive attached to it. So, don't get too in love with that rack. This is not a nice person that we're seeing here. Um, oh, wait, wait. I can, I can match it even more. Let, let me get more into that lighting. Okay, there we go. Wait, wait. Okay. Wait, what if I went with... No, no, no. Wow, that... No, no, no. That doesn't match. Okay. So... <laughs> so, yeah. Uh... As always, you guys know that skulls are some of my favorites. But uh, the other thing I like a lot in this image is the staff. If you look at the staff, um, the staff, the, the top of the staff is, is an arm and the bottom of the staff is a leg. See? Right there. So that staff is also one of my favorite parts. And the other really, really, really cool thing about this image is that, um, well, so you guys remember how I told you that this is for Eldritch Works. Well, what Eldritch Works makes is miniatures so like you know th this this becomes a miniature right so um so that's really awesome <laughs> that is that is really really cool um So yeah, yeah, th there's that. Uh, like I, I really love that. Um, that's very, very exciting. So yeah, this is, uh, and of course, you know, the chainmail. Chainmail is always. So anyway, yes, and uh, well, here we go. Okay, so that's going to be it from me today. Um, I will see you guys next Tuesday. Now, next Tuesday, we're going to be doing a little bit of an experiment uh, that we discussed here earlier, but I'm going to tell you guys about it again, just in case. Uh, so what we're going to do next Tuesday is I want to record a full perspective course for my YouTube channel. And as an experiment, next Tuesday, what we're going to do is I'm going to... Uh, next Tuesday's stream is going to be me recording the first, the, like, you know, the first session of that perspective course. Now, don't worry. It's not going to be like just me recording and not interacting with the chat room. I'm just, you know, I'm going to record and then I'll record it like it's a class. And then, of course, I'm going to edit that. Right, so wait, th this lighting feels weird now. Now that I'm not in a green scene. <laughs> oh, that's so blue! Wow. Okay. Um. Oh. Oompa, um. Violet Beauregard again. Okay. Why not just white? Okay. No. Yep. Okay. Wow. What color am I to use here? That one seems okay. Um. Uh, that one. Okay. Anyway. So. It's such a weird color. Like, as soon as it gets dark, it gets so weird. We can just go white. Okay, there we are. With white. Okay. Um, so, next Tuesday at 2 p.m., I'm going to be uh, giving a perspective... Uh, a perspective... Um, 
course live and recording it to later on edit into a YouTube video. So if any of you want to kind of are interested in that, uh, that's going to be next Tuesday. It's experimental. I don't know if we're going to do it every Tuesday. I'm going to see how it works out. We're just trying out some new stuff and all that. So, but if you're interested in learning perspective, then that is definitely something you'll want to check out. For now, thank you everybody for hanging out. It was a pretty intense week. I'm going into a pretty intense weekend. So there's that. Um, I'm going to change your view. Yes, I'm going to change your perspective on a lot of things. Miss Flux. Give us new... Yes. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to... Um, um, yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Thanks for all the conversation. Don't worry. We're also going to have a conversation on Tuesday. So it's going to be perspective and chat and all that kind of stuff. I hope to see you then. I also hope you all have a great, fun weekend. Those of you that are going to go watch Spider-Man, I hope you enjoy it. Um, and that's it. Let's do the goodbye thing. You have been watching the Ministry of Abnormality YouTube live broadcast. I've been your host, O Abnormal. Today has been Friday, June 9th of 2023. I will be back on Tuesday with the perspective course. But until then, I hope you all have a very erotic and fun weekend filled with great food, preferably pizza. Until Tuesday then, good hunting, stay naughty, thanks for watching, and goodbye. Um. So what we really need to discuss is what color do I look? It's not so much about what color is the best. It's which color is the sexiest, which color makes me look the sexiest. Like, is it passion red, cool blue, royal purple, fire orange? I'm running out of things here. Green would it be moldy green. That's not sexy. Um, cyan. It's, is cyan sexy? It's a sexy name. It's like a you know. It's like a nice stripper name, cyan. But but it's not. Is it a sexy color? Like if, if I look cyan, is it sexy? And then there's the violet bodyguard. 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 But but but. Beaudegard. Violet Beaudegard. I don't think that's sexy either.